Hello, welcome to Drag Queen Story Corner. My name is Asifa Lahore and I am a drag queen. And today I am going to be reading A Memory of Elephants, written by Gus Berger and illustrations by Oliver Lake. So get comfy, settling, and let's go. A cauldron of hawks in the clouds they roam as a memory of elephants find their way home. A parliament of owls sit and make laws as a clutter of cats sharpen their claws. Ooh, I like that one. A bevy of swans quietly talk as a gaggle of geese rudely squawk. Quack, 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 quack. That was my squawking. A mob of whales gracefully glide as a school of mackerel wisely hide. Those mackerels are very clever. They don't want to get eaten by the whales. A shrewdness of bees choose their flowers as a rabble of butterflies flutter for hours. I absolutely love butterflies. They're so pretty. A slurry of foxes plan the night's prowl as a pack of hounds collectively howl. Has anyone ever seen a fox at night? A quiver of cobras stand up straight as an ambush of tigers patiently wait. Does anyone know what a cobra is? A congregation of crocodiles hangs around as a crash of hippos makes a frightful sound. I don't know who's scarier, the hippos or the crocodiles. A pod of dolphins from a wave they breach as a parcel of penguins march up the beach. Look how cute the penguins look. A prickle of hedgehogs snuffle around as a lounge of lizards sleep on the ground. A silver of sharks swim quick as can be as a bed of clams lie under the sea. Don't the sharks look scary? A cackle of hyenas sing out of key as a troop of monkeys hide in the tree. Can you sing? The end. Thank you so much for listening. That was A Memory of Elephants and I am Asifa Lahore. Did you learn something new from that book today? We are so grateful to the Pitt Rivers Museum, Sassifizine, the Beyond the Binary Exhibition and the Heritage Fund for allowing us to share this story with you today. Now you guys have a fabulous day and I will see you on the next Drag Queen Story Corner. Bye! Oh, hello there! Welcome to Drag Queen Story Corner!
My name is Asifa Lahore and I am a drag queen. And today I am going to be reading you The Rare Monkey with the Colourful Bottom. Written by Joanne Gale and illustrated by Jeffrey Mundell. Now settle in, get comfy, and let's go! I love reading books, don't you? In the wild, there was a very shy and sad monkey. <laughs> so sad. He was sad because he was different. He was the only one who had a colourful bottom. Lots of wild animals have colourful fur, feathers or skin, but only the monkey's bottom was bright and full of lots of different colours. He had lost hope of finding someone else with a bottom like his. Isn't that sad? Every day in the wild, the animals would make fun of his bottom. The grey elephants would throw their trunks up and laugh. The yellow lions would roar and giggle. It's not very nice of them, is it? The brown tortoise would slowly turn and chuckle so hard that his shell would look like jelly. Even the birds who were bright green would squawk and joke. I don't know about you, but these animals don't seem very nice to me. When the monkey climbed a tree, the other monkeys cackled with laughter. None of them had a strange multicoloured bottom. The colourful bottomed monkey felt so alone. Oh, that's so sad, isn't it? One day, the animals joked so much that the monkey decided to leave. He crept out of sight, avoiding anyone he saw and making sure he had his bottom hid from anyone who might see. He hurried away. Soon he no longer saw plants and trees. He saw cars and people. He heard strange noises and smelled unusual smells. The monkey found himself in a town. Do you live in a town or a city? In town. He saw strangely shaped buildings and people wearing unusual clothes. Would someone here have a bottom like his? What do you think? Down a street, the monkey spotted a brown dog. He tried to hide his colourful bottom in case the dog laughed. But the dog didn't laugh. He strode past and smiled. The monkey found a grey cat lazing on a bench. He hid his bottom, but the cat didn't make fun of him. She told the monkey that being colourful didn't make him any better. The monkey wondered what she meant.
the monkey came across a young girl with a camera. He tried to hide his bottom, but snap, she took a photo. She had never seen an animal as bright as he was. She gave the monkey the photo and he saw his bottom. It certainly was bright. Was he always going to be made fun of and feel shy and sad? The monkey sat quietly and thought, I feel very sorry for the monkey. I hope he doesn't always feel sad. The next day, the monkey saw the same girl. She was wearing a bright red jumper and green, pink and yellow bands in her hair. She noticed the monkey and smiled. I wonder why she's smiling and why she's so colorful. The next day, he saw her wearing purple trousers, orange shoes, and a multicolored hat. She took another photo and this time the monkey smiled. Isn't that sweet? She was nearly as colorful as he was. Soon, the monkey saw people all over the town wearing more colourful clothes. Everyone was bright like his bottom. Look at all those colours. Which one's your favourite colour? The monkey missed the plants and the trees. He kept the girl's photo and headed for home. What do you think is going to happen? Soon he saw grey elephants, yellow lions, brown tortoise and green birds. What do you think they're going to say to him? They laughed, giggled and chuckled. But this time the monkey decided not to feel shy and sad. He held his photo tightly and smiled the largest smile he could. Good on him, sticking up for himself. The other monkeys suddenly felt very strange for laughing. The lion's guffaw faded and the elephants stopped joking. The birds stared, the tortoise slowly turned, but swallowed his chuckle when he saw no one else making fun. They all saw how splendid the monkey was now, that he had paid no attention to their joking. What counts is being yourself and living who you are, thought the monkey, and he was never shy or sad about his bright bottom again. Oh, I'm so happy for him. The rare monkey with the colorful bottom. The end. Thank you so much for listening. That was the rare monkey with the colorful bottom. And I am a Sifa Lahore. Did you learn anything new from that book? We are so grateful to the publishers, Patterns in the Jam, for allowing us to share the story with you. And I want to give a massive shout out to the Pitt Rivers Museum, Sassifyzeem, the Beyond the Binary Exhibition, and the Heritage Fund for allowing us also to share this story with you. I hope you've had a great time. I have been Asifa Lahore and I look forward to seeing you on the next Drag Queen Story Corner. Bye! Oh, hello 
there. Welcome to Drag Queen's Story Corner. My name is Asifa Lahore and I am a drag queen. Today I'm going to be reading you Corduroy by Don Freeman. Sit back, relax, get comfy and let's go! Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. Look at him. There he is. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's black eyes. Oh, mummy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear her mother said. I've spent too much money. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Do you see how cute he is? He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of bed. This must be a palace. Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around, admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. Oh, poor Corduroy. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. And look, there it is. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. Oh, I think Corduroy's in danger. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arms and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Poor Corduroy. 
Oh, he must be feeling so sad. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mum said I could bring you home. I don't know about you, but I like the sound of Lisa. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. I think she really likes Corduroy. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa and gave him a big hug. Oh, I think they're going to be friends forever. And that's it, the end. Thank you so much for listening. I am Asifa Lahore, and that was Corduroy by Don Freeman. Did you learn something new from this story? We are so grateful to the Pitt Rivers Museum, the Beyond the Binary Exhibition, Sassify Zine and the Heritage Fund for allowing us to share this amazing story with you. Have a fabulous day and I hope to see you on another Drag Queen Story Corner very soon. I have been Asifa Lahore. Bye!